they're right. So I'm smoking Ed Curry. I'm the president and owner, mad scientist, and chef at the Pucker Buck Pepper Company, and I'm going crazy. Welcome to the first installment of the Reaper Growing Camp. Uh, the reason it's so late is because we've been growing. Okay, we have a farm and we need to produce the peppers that we use uh, to make the pepper mash for all those legal and viable companies out there that buy our mash and put it in the product. We also get the seeds out of there. Uh, I'm showing you today that you can start. What's today's date, Tom? May 6th. It's May 6th. You can start your seeds this late and get production out of it. What we do, okay, is really simple. We use these starter plug trays, okay? You saw me do it at the uh, tees for how easy it is to start your uh, plants just in a windowsill. And we'll be giving updates on that too. Sorry, I keep on forgetting, okay? because uh, this is the important stuff. We prefer to use miracle Grow Performance, the organic products. You can get all sorts of them at your local Home Depot or Lowe's, or you can order them directly from miracle Grow. Now, people are like, why did you partner with Bonnie Plants? Well, because Bonnie Plants, Scott's miracle Grow is an awesome company. We've been using their products forever, okay? And they, they gave us the honor of testing some new products and then ask me for seeds. And what that does is that gives the public all over the United States an opportunity to try hot peppers and get hooked and become part of the community. All right, so it's a win-win, okay? If you have any questions, you can go to their website and check it out. All right, come to our website and check it out or call us, we're here to help you, all right? so. What we're gonna do today, I've got some really special reapers here, some ones that I've been uh, having a, a little play with. We're gonna start with these. We'll be doing installments every couple of days because uh, Dark wants a lot of video, okay? But we're gonna show you from start to finish how simple it is. We're also gonna take some plants that overwintered outside. We're lucky to be here in South Carolina and we're gonna trim those up and show you how to get more production out of an old plant. We're gonna do the transplanting, we're gonna do the trimming, the feeding, everything we do, we're gonna show you so that you can have success. Tom? Yes, Ed. They're out of the performance seed starter. So we're using the regular old seed starter just to start this. So these plants won't be fully organic. Why do we use a seed starter? Ed? Well, seed starter just makes it easier for root development. It has the proper mix of nutrients and soil and, you know, vermiculite, other stuff, so that plants can grow. If you don't do it correctly, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble. But you can just use regular old dirt, all right? I showed Tom, we shoveled some dirt out of my backyard, put it into pots, put some seeds in, plants grew, okay? It just takes a little longer. Seed starter helps them. So if you see Tom's just spreading it out, he's not really packing it down. You don't need to pack it. Some people like stamp it in, stamp it in, stamp it in. You want the roots to be able to grow. All right, and it's very, very simple. I recommend that you get some plant tags, okay? We're only gonna put one in here because all of these are gonna be the same type of seed. So on the plant tag, put the name of the plant. People call me all the time. My reapers look like jalapenos and my jalapenos look like reapers. You know, well, you, maybe you did not tag them correctly. Uh, I recommend putting one tag in every single cell if you're a beginner. If you're, if you're doing a whole tray, you can just use one tag. But, you know, it's important to tag your plants unless you really don't care. I'm using a paint pen. Okay, the reason I'm using a paint pen is because when you water, it doesn't rot. <laughs> People use uh, Sharpies. Guess what? <laughs> After about a month, the name is gone. <laughs> so use a paint pen. All right. This is S E C R A R M. 
that's my coat. Smoking Ed's Carolina Reaper. I'm not going to tell you what the ARM is. All right, so we're going to put one tag in. It's there. The paint will dry. It'll be there the whole time. Tom, if yes, you will do me a favor, you really only need to put two in each cell. Okay, and you can, when you're transplanting, you can leave both plants in there. I prefer it, especially if the plants are going to be outside because they grow up together and they help keep steady in the wind. I like to put three or four in each one because I have a lot of seeds. And all you got to do is make a little dent, about a quarter inch, eighth of an inch. Right? Tom? Right, Ed. Now, you've watched me do this process now for what, almost two years? Yep. Okay. Is it this simple? It's pretty simple, Ed. <laughs> pretty simple. So if you'll go ahead and take care of that. Should we wear gloves when dealing with hot pepper seeds straight out of the bag, Ed? Well, <laughs> you know, it's a pretty smart idea to do that. But I happen to do these in a hydrogen peroxide bath. I took uh, hydrogen peroxide and mixed it uh, 30, 70 with water, okay? And I washed the seeds. It takes out most of the, the heat, okay? Uh, you can use tea as a bath. That will also help. Uh, if you're gonna be handling super hot peppers, super hot pepper seeds, and you're not gonna wear gloves, it's best not to touch anything high or low because you're gonna be in pain, okay? That pain is temporary. It's just a chemical reaction we perceive as heat, but it can be very, very discomforting. <laughs> All you need to do is go to your local store, even like uh, Walgreens or something like that has it, and you get nitro gloves, put them on, handle the seeds. But we're idiots here. We just go ahead and touch everything high. So as you see, Tom's putting a couple seeds in, and all I do is cover them up slightly, okay? That's all I do. Now, should we water these things with a hose like Charlie's watering the bigger plants? Well, I wouldn't recommend watering with a hose to start with. You can also at Home Depot or Lowe's or your local garden store, uh, they have sprayers, okay? And you can fill it with water and spray it. And all you have to do is keep the soil damp. Don't make it wet, keep it damp. And by keeping it damp, uh, you'll give the germination process a heads up. If you get it wet, there's a chance uh, that you can overwater, and then you get a fungus, you know, some, some, maybe some rot or something, and it kills the seed. There's really three or four things that the plants need, okay? They need dirt, all right? People germinate in paper towel. I don't know why. There's a lot of chance of just taking germ plant out of the paper towel, you can hurt the root, okay? And then you're screwed, excuse my language. Uh, so just put them in dirt. Then you gotta cover the plant with some dirt. You gotta cover these seeds a little bit. Then you give them some water. Then you give them some light. They don't really need heat. I mean, the, if, you, if you use one of those heat mats, you know, 85 degrees is plenty. 80 or 75 degrees is, 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 is better, okay? And all that's gonna happen is you're gonna have a difference between German in two or three days or German in three to five days, okay? So don't waste your money. Just go ahead and germ. Uh, give them light, like I said. We've had people call us and say, nothing's popping. I've had my seeds under my bed for three weeks. Well, if they're under the bed, nothing's gonna happen. Put them in a window. If you're lucky enough to have a farm and have the, like we have, the great people at Springs Farm, I get these awesome greenhouses, okay? But not everybody can get a greenhouse. There are little greenhouses available online, at your local stores. You can just get a little four by six greenhouse, put it up in your backyard, plenty of light, plenty of heat. If, you, if you're in a cold climate, just get a little space here, okay? That's all you need. Cover the plants with dirt, just like we're saying, all right? I'm gonna help time out just for time's, time's sake. Eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch deep. Just 
Should we put the date on the back of these so we can mark the progress? Sure. That's All right. A great idea, Ed. So all we're gonna do now is give them a little bit of water. I don't think we have a sprayer here, do we? We're gonna make this table dirty, okay? Uh, Cause it's gonna get a little muddy, but we're just doing that for you. Normally I'd put these on the ground. Tom, you sprayed me. That was just for you, Dark. See what happens when you water with those? The seeds immediately bubble up. Well, I'm sorry, we weren't prepared. Here, Tom. Look at that. It's got an adjustment. Oh, look <laughs> at that. Amazing. Now, as Tom said, sometimes the seeds bubble up. What do you have to do, Tom, if the seeds bubble up? Push it back down, Ed. That's all you need to do is push it back down. Awesome. So, Tom, if you'll fix that one, that's all you need to do. Well, now remember, we use Scott's miracle Grow. Uh, we use their organic product most of the time. This one tray is gonna be not organic because they were out of the seed starter mix, but the rest we're gonna use is organic. You don't have to use the Scott's, you can use whatever's available, okay? I love you, God bless you, all of you have a great day, and we'll be bringing another video to you in a day or two. For me and Tom and the rest of the Puckerbuck crew, we wanna wish you a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Those seeds were spicy, Ed. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know he says. Don't look at me. Make sure you're looking at this one. I'm looking everywhere. Cause <laughs> I know, but okay. I'm so just, I'm like just dark, trying to. Get back out of okay, the shot. Okay, fine, I'm out okay. of the shot. <laughs>